All right, hello everybody. This is Cal Dad, episode number 337, The Vice of Anger. You know, the vice of anger is uh, one of the worst vices you could possibly have. And it seems like it's uh, rampant these days. Maybe it's been rampant forever. I don't know. But uh, people seem to be very sensitive and getting uh, very triggered very easily these days. And so let's talk about anger really quickly and, um, and then we'll move on. So uh, what is anger, by the way? Anger, and I've talked about this before, it has two responses, okay? Uh, anger is, has two components to it. Number one is the perception that something was wrong done to you, like you were offended or insulted by somebody. Perception. And then number two is uh, your response to that perception. Then that's the, you know, lashing out or fighting or yelling or screaming or spitting or whatever you do. So those are the two responses to anger. Now, here's the deal. There's something called natural reaction in the world, okay? And I don't know if you know what this is, but it's one of uh, the, uh, the big five, Carl Jung. Carl Jung, he's a psychologist. He had a big five personality test, uh, and uh, those are openness to new reaction. Uh, so it's ocean is the mnemonic. So it's openness to new reaction, conscientiousness, extrovertedness, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And that's openness, that's uh, the uh, natural reaction. That's the anger response. Essentially, it's a threat response. How neurotic are you? Now, so uh, people uh, can be low in neuroticism and they can be really high in neuroticism. I took the big five personality test. I won't share everything with you. But on a scale of 100 on neurotic, which is one to 100, I was a one on neurotic. Meaning, I mean, you could spit in my face and be like, can you wipe it off? I mean, what are you doing? You know, but there's people out there that neuroticism's near 100. And uh, anything you say to them, they become offended and mad and angry. Like you, they feel like you're being threatening to them. And there is a thing, by the way, um, you know, little boys and little girls, they have uh, similar neurotic levels in terms of their uh, threat response. But once you hit puberty, uh, the guys' neurotic levels drop a little bit and the girls go up. So uh, women, women have higher neurotic levels than men. And I think pretty much anybody that's uh, lived in the world and actually observed people can see that, that women are a little touchier than men are, and rightfully so. Why, why is that? Because women have had to raise children throughout our entire um, existence as human beings, and um, they need to have a higher threat response. I mean, the whole cliche is Mama Grizzly Bear, right? Mama Grizzly is a little touchy when it comes to her children, isn't she? Yeah. Well, Mama Human is too, believe it or not. And the fact of the matter is Mama Human, her, her psychology is intrinsically tied to infants even, even when she doesn't have one. So she has to have a higher threat response than, than males do, uh, just in, innately and intrinsically for the survival and the welfare of the species of human kinds. And I'm not saying threat response is bad, but it can be overdone for sure. That's the anger response. Now we live in a society, right? Uh, where virtually nobody ever gets physically assaulted. Nobody ever gets like uh, attacked or beaten. Nobody ever gets murdered. You know, it's, it's pretty rare by the way, that uh, we actually have to have a real threat response. You know, I think it was like two, 300 years ago, 8% of people were actually died a violent death. Like that's a big deal. Like uh, when one in, uh, one in 12 people in your society is gonna end up murdered or you know, a, a die in bloodshed. Uh, yeah, you probably have to have a little higher threat response at that point in time. But now, I mean, what do we have? Um, 8,000 murders out of 300 million every single, uh, 300 million people in America, 330 million people in America. That's like nothing. Like the, your chance of getting murdered is like, uh, you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning almost, you know? And so uh, we don't really need the threat response anymore. But nonetheless, anger, this is what I want to say. Most people do not have any reason ever to be angry because... Um, the insults, for the most part, aren't real. But even if they are real, you're supposed to turn the other cheek, right? So the two responses are the perception of evil, or uh, the perception of an insult to you, right? And then number two is what you do with it. That's your, your reaction to it. So whether there's a real um, insult or not to you, you're supposed to be able to deal with it like an adult and a human being and ignore it, right? Not lash out and be angry or yell or scream or spit or whatever you kick or or reputation smear or something like that. You don't have to act angry, you really don't. And so I wanted to tell everybody out there because I was actually talking to a younger person uh, today and I said, your generation is actually handicapping itself. It really is because it's teaching you to be angry. Now, that's like the opposite of what we wanna teach human beings because human beings tend to anger more than they need to as we've already discussed. The chance of you actually getting beaten physically or violently or murdered is like nil. But the chance of you having an anger response is like really good. Most people actually have to deal with anger issues. That's why it's a vice. So 
Look at it that way, by the way, people, that really the, the problem with anger is not the people that are attacking you. The problem with anger is your response to the people that you perceive are attacking you. Because a lot of the time, by the way, you perceive an attack when it's not even an attack. You could tell two people, one with a low natural reaction, one with a high natural reaction, the exact same thing. This person is going to act offended and this person is going to be like, well, I don't care. Like, that's just your opinion, right? And so, and we see this with the President of the United States of America, by the way. Like some people, he says something like, um, there's some bad hombres coming over the border and we'll be like, yeah, there probably are some bad ones. I don't know. You know, it's possible. He has the numbers. I don't, you know, and then you say that to one person and they're like, Hey, no big deal. And the other person like, Oh, he's a bigot. He's a racist. They like, they lose their crap on you and they'll actually spit in the face of anybody wearing a MAGA hat, you know? And so, um, yeah, why is that? That makes no sense. It's just a difference of perception is what it is. It's the same statement. And yet people perceive it differently, which tells you people with anger issues are the problem. You really, you can't justify anger based upon people's opinions or positions. And if you're, if the society and culture is trying to enculturate the younger generations to have an anger response, well, what are you doing? You're breaking down the lines of communication, which is called diplomacy. If you could be a diplomat and actually uh, hear, hear people that you disagree with and hear them like in a logical way and actually have a reasoned, a non-emotive response to, then maybe you can actually move on and do something good for your society. But freaking out and yelling and screaming, that you know what it tells me? It tells me you have a high natural reaction and you're dumb. That's what it tells me. Like, well, you're not really dumb, but you're not able to look at the, the like how it affects you in your life. Because if you overreact with anger, it means you haven't really said, well, you know, that's just their opinion and why do I have to act like this? You haven't. You've blown yourself apart and you've also taken yourself out of the conversation. And what you also did was besides that is you ruined the conversation and you closed all lines of communication in the future. Thank you very much. Good for you. Hey, now you're angry. Look what you just did. You just destroyed a good relationship. So anyway, um, this is the anger response. And I think all Catholics in this Lenten season need to think about it. If, you pro if you're prone to anger, you're prone to yelling, you're, you're prone to screaming or reputation smearing or insulting or whatever you do, stop it. All you have to do is stop it. Like if somebody makes you angry, just say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Just say that. Or you could say, my Jesus, me. It's an old Orthodox prayer. Whenever you, uh, you're confronting yourself with sin, my Jesus, me. That's all you have to say. And if you do that, maybe you could break the cycle of anger. And if people insult you, hey, dummy, what are you doing? My Jesus, me. Hey, I'm, I'm just working. That's all I'm doing. My Jesus, me. Bring the Lord into the equation and your life will become better and then it will make everybody's life better around you. This is Catholic Dad making you think about it. Please like or subscribe, get the Mass, and pray the Daily Rosary. God bless.